Om Shanti. This is the Abhyakt Murli of 27th of March, 1983. And the title is Abhyakt Bhaptada's Sweet Elevated Versions for the Kumari's Pati. Where is Bhaptada celebrating a meeting with all of you today? In which place are all of you sitting? You are celebrating a meeting at the meeting place of the ocean and the rivers. You like the shores of the ocean, do you not? How elevated would a place be where there isn't just the ocean, but also a meeting place of so many rivers? Even the ocean loves meeting the river so much. Would such a meeting take place in any other age? The meeting of this age will be remembered and celebrated in other ways throughout the whole cycle. You have come here to celebrate such a meeting, have you not? This is why you have come running from everywhere, is it not? You merge in the ocean and you become master oceans of knowledge. That is, you become stabilized in the unlimited form equal to the Father. Do you have this unlimited experience? To have an unlimited attitude means to have a benevolent attitude towards all souls of the world, to be a master world benefactor not just to be benevolent to yourself and the souls in your limited connection, but to have an attitude of benevolence towards everyone. I have become a Brahma Kumari. I have become a pure soul. To continue to move forward, being content in your progress and attainment for yourself is not being stable, in an unlimited attitude, equal to the Father. A limited attitude means to have an attitude of contentment just for yourself. Do you want to remain just here or do you want to move forward? Some children, instead of taking the golden chance and golden medal and spending time in unlimited service and time for unlimited attainment, become happy with the silver medal and think, I am moving along fine. I am not making any mistakes. I am fulfilling my responsibilities to both my worldly and spiritual life. There isn't any conflict of sanskars within the gathering. That isn't having an unlimited attitude equal to the father's, is it? Would a couple seem matched if the father is the world benefactor and the child is a self-benefactor? You don't even like to hear this. Therefore, would you like to become that and move along in that way? If a child of the master of all treasures doesn't become a great donor of treasures, what would be said? If any of you were asked whether you have a right to the inheritance of all of the Father's treasures, you would say yes. What have you received all the treasures for? Have you received them so that you can eat, drink, and enjoy yourself? You have received the directions to distribute them and increase them, have you not? So how will you share them? Have you opened a Gita Patshala or are you happy just to share them whenever you have a chance? You have received an unlimited attainment from the unlimited Father. Therefore, maintain unlimited zeal and enthusiasm. A Kumari life at the confluence age is the most elevated life filled with blessings. So according to the drama, all of you special souls have naturally received such a life filled with blessings. 
Are you using your life to give everyone blessings and the great donation? You can draw a line as long as you want of naturally received blessings with the pen of elevated actions. This time has this blessing. The time has this blessing. The Kumari life has this blessing and the father is the bestower of blessings. The task is also one that gives you blessings. So have you taken full advantage of this? Have you taken the chance of ensuring a continuous line of 21 births and of becoming constantly complete for 21 generations? You can do as much as you want in a Kumari life. Souls who are free have received this fortune. Ask yourself, am I free or am I dependent? The bondage of those who are dependent is a trap of their minds, own wasteful and weak thoughts. You are not getting yourself caught in the trap that you yourself have created, are you? Is there the trap of questions? If you took a picture of the trap that you have created, it would be like a question mark. You are experienced in the questions that arise, are you not? What will happen? How will it happen? It will not happen like this, will it? This is a trap. You were also told earlier that the one powerful constant thought of Brahmins of the confluence age is, whatever happens is benevolent. Whatever happens will be elevated and it will be the best of all. Since the bad days and non-benevolent days have now finished, this is the thought to finish the trap. Every day of the confluence age is an important day. It is not a bad day. Every day you have a festival. Every day is to be celebrated. With this powerful thought, you can finish the trap of wasteful thoughts. Kumaris are the pride of Bhaktada and the Brahmin clan. Kumaris receive the first chance. The Pandavas are amused that young Kumaris become teachers. They become dadis and didis. You receive so many chances. However, if you still don't take the chance, what can be said? Do you know what you say? I will remain cooperative, but I won't surrender myself. How would those who don't surrender themselves become equal? What did the father do? He surrendered everything, did he not? Or did he just remain cooperative? What did Father Brahma do? Did he surrender himself? Or did he just remain cooperative? What did Jagatamba do? She too was a Kumari. So are you going to follow the mother and father? Or follow your sisters? When I see that one's life, that's just what I like. So that is following a sister, is it not? What will you do now? Fear is because of your own weaknesses, nothing else. So what will you now take? Will you take a golden medal? Or is a silver medal fine? Don't look at your weaknesses. If you look at them, you become afraid. Don't become weak yourself and don't look at the weaknesses of others. Do you understand what you have to do? Bab Dada is very pleased to see Kumaris. When people have a daughter, they become unhappy, whereas the more Kumaris that come, the greater Bab Dada's happiness because Bab Dada understands that every Kumari is a world benefactor. 
a great donor and a bestower of blessings. So do you understand how great the importance of a Kumari life is? Today is special day of Kumaris. In Bharat, they specially invite the Kumaris on the eighth day according to the Hindu calendar. Therefore, Bhaktada too is celebrating the eighth day. Each Kumari is a form of eight powers. Acha, to those who have a right to the elevated life filled with blessings, to those who have a right to a golden chance, to those who have a right to draw the line of elevated fortune for 21 births, to those who have a right to the blessing of being one who is free, to the Brahma Kumaris who belong to the clan of Shiva, especially to the elevated Kumaris, and also to the multi-million times fortunate souls who are celebrating a meeting at the same time. Bhaktada's love, remembrance, and namaste. Victory of Karma Yoga over the suffering of karma. You are a victorious jewel who has attained victory over the suffering or karma, are you not? Those people who have to suffer the consequences of their karma, whereas you are a karma yogi, you are not one who has to suffer, but one who has burned everything for all time. You burn everything in such a way that for 21 births, there is no name or trace of any suffering of karma. You would only burn something when it comes to you. That comes in order for you to burn it, not to make you suffer. It comes to take leave because even the suffering of karma is aware that it can only come at this time and not any other time. This is why it seeks its chance every now and again. When it sees that nothing is going to be gained here, it goes away. While looking at Dadi and Didi, you are happy to see so many hands, are you not? The dreams that you had have become practical, haven't they? You were having dreams of so many hands and so many centers because Dadi and Didi have the maximum desire for such hands. Therefore, there would of course be happiness on seeing so many ready-made hands. There is a difference between the Kumari of Bharat and those from abroad. Why do you need to earn an income? Someone wanted to study for a degree. Until you have put into practice, the degree has no value. The value of the degree is when you serve. Use it practically. Even then, when you don't practice what you have studied, but you just remain caught up in the household, even after you studies, then it is said, what benefit is there in having studied? Even those who are illiterate are able to look after children, and those two educated ones are looking after them. So what is the difference? In the same way, it is when you study this and come onto the stage of service that this degree is then of value. You receive a chance here. You automatically receive a degree. Is this a degree a small thing? Look how big the degree is that Jagadamba Saraswati received. You cannot even begin to describe the degree you receive here. Blessing, may you be powerful and with catching power, catch your real original sanskars and become the form of them. The principle 
basic of effort is catching power. Just as scientists are able to catch a sound in advance, in the same way, you who have the power of silence can catch your original divine sanskars. For this, always remain aware of what you were and that you are once again becoming that. The more you catch those sanskars, the more you will become a form of them. Something of 5,000 years ago should be experienced as clearly as though it is only a matter of yesterday. Only when you make your awareness so elevated and clear will you become powerful. Slogan, happiness is the breath of Brahman life. Therefore, even though you might lose your body, you mustn't lose your happiness. Om Shanti.